Okay, this morning we're going to do a, a simple uh, Euler buckling problem, and we have one laid out here on the screen. Uh, so we have a uh, column which is uh, pin connected at both ends. Uh, determine the thickness of the hollow circular column shown. We have a, a cross section uh, with an unknown thickness T uh, and an outer diameter uh, of 375 millimeters. Uh, to resist the load of 39 meganewtons against buckling using Euler's buckling formula. And I provide the formula for the moment of inertia for the tube and we're going to use steel, so um, uh, Young's modulus of 200 uh, GPA. So buckling in its, uh, certainly when you're applying uh, Euler's buckling, it's a fairly straightforward, very easy process. Uh, in its mechanics. The, the real challenge in buckling is looking at the frame, doing the frame analysis uh, within which the column is contained to make sure that you uh, make appropriate choices with regards to the end conditions, uh, the boundary conditions, if you will, and, and thus choose your effective length factor appropriately. So I'm just gonna bring up a little diagram uh, and that shows us um, you know, a, a variety of boundary conditions for various columns and their uh, effective length factor K, uh, which you would use uh, as appropriate. And I'm not going to go into the theory of those uh, at this point in time. So, so it doesn't really matter. Whatever the frame is, however complex, uh, an appropriate analysis of, analysis of that is required to arrive at the loading of the column and the uh, effective length factor. But having done that, the application of Euler's buckling formula is really straightforward. So in this case, uh, this isn't uh, an example of the structural analysis to arrive at those things. This is just an application of Euler's buckling formula. So we're just going to go ahead and apply the end conditions uh, that we have here. So I'll choose my pen and we're going to start Identify Euler's buckling formula. And that's equal to, or P critical is equal to pi squared EI all divided by KL all squared where K is your effective length factor. Now the effective length factor is drawn from those decisions that we talked about earlier. What are your boundary conditions for the column? What is the unsupported length? And so in this case, if we go down to the diagram, we can see here that we're using an effective length factor of one uh, for a pin pinned uh, situation. So uh, what I want to do is uh, come up with a, a formula, if you will, for the modulus. Or, sorry, no. So what I want to do is to uh, just write out my formula for the moment of inertia. Uh, so I of the tube is equal to pi over 4. And so that's my radius external to the fourth minus my radius internal to the fourth. And that's equal to pi over 4. And this is 375 millimeters. And divide by 2 to get to a radius. All to the 4th minus my radius internal to the 4th. So basically, I'm just going to plug all of these into Euler's buckling formula and then rearrange it and solve for my internal uh, radius. So critical load then. So P critical, which we have in the problem is given to us as 39 meganewtons. And to be fair, I shouldn't write that out as 39 meganewtons. Let's work in something uh, more reasonable, so I'll, I'll put it in in uh, newtons. So I'll multiply by 10 to the sixth. Uh, and that would then be equal to pi squared, our E 
is 200,000 at megapascals is a newton per millimeter squared so that works here and then we can multiply it by i and we're obviously talking in millimeters because newtons and millimeters squared and megapascals are all uh, compatible units so pi over 4 187.5 millimeters to the fourth minus our inner to the fourth. And that's divided by our effective length factor of 1.0 and our length of 2,500 millimeters. And that is all squared. I'll put it all squared. So if I rearrange that and solve for our inner, we get a value of 181 millimeters. And then I can go ahead and get the actual answer to the problem by getting our thickness is equal to our, our outer minus our, our inner. And that's 187 0.5 millimeters minus 181 millimeters and gives us an answer of 6.5 millimeters. So as simple as they come, uh, it's not a difficult problem for the application of Euler's buckling formula. The, really the only place where you have risk of getting confused is in the analysis of the frame itself and the selection of the boundary conditions, appropriate boundary conditions for your column. So you need the, the critical load or the load uh, coming from the structure and you need the boundary conditions for the column. But otherwise Euler's buckling formula is a fairly straightforward application. Hope that was helpful. Thank you.